Imagine embarking on a solo mission to the coldest, most isolated place on Earth with no guarantee of making it back alive. In this video, we will explore the incredible story of Richard E. Byrd, an American explorer and aviator who achieved legendary status for his expeditions to the North and South Poles. From his daring flights over the Arctic to his harrowing survival in Antarctica, we will uncover the thrilling moments that defined his career. Join us as we delve into the remarkable life of Richard E. Byrd and uncover the secrets behind his historical feats. With gripping tales of adventure, danger, and triumph, this video is sure to keep you on the edge of your seat until the very end. Who was Richard? Richard E. Byrd, a United States Navy officer and explorer, is known for his polar expeditions and scientific research in the early 20th century. He was born on October 25, 1888 in Winchester, Virginia, and showed an early interest in exploration and adventure. He led several expeditions to the Antarctic and Arctic, becoming a celebrated explorer and pioneer in the field of polar research. Early Life and Career Byrd graduated from the United States Naval Academy in 1912 and became a naval aviator in 1917. During World War I, he served as a pilot and was awarded the Navy Cross for his bravery in combat. After the war, he became interested in polar exploration and became the navigator and executive officer of Donald B. McMillan's Arctic Expedition in 1925. This experience gave Byrd his first taste of polar exploration, and he became determined to lead his own expedition to the Antarctic. Byrd's Antarctic Expeditions Richard E. Byrd's expeditions to the Antarctic are some of the most fascinating and daring feats of exploration in history. In his first expedition in 1928, Byrd and his team sailed to the Ross Sea and set up camp at Little America. There, they conducted groundbreaking scientific experiments, including research on weather patterns, ocean currents, and animal life. But Byrd's true claim to fame came when he made the first flight over the South Pole during this expedition. Can you imagine the thrill of flying over unexplored territory, watching as the vast expanse of Antarctica stretches out beneath you? It's no wonder that Byrd became an international celebrity overnight. But Byrd's second Antarctic expedition, which took place in 1933 to 35 was even more ambitious. This time, he set up a permanent base called Little America II and conducted extensive research on geology, biology, and meteorology. Byrd was the first person to establish a meteorological station in Antarctica, which collected data on weather patterns and atmospheric conditions. He also conducted experiments on cosmic rays and the Earth's magnetic field. But it wasn't just the scientific research that made Byrd's expedition so incredible. It was the sheer grit and determination of the team that braved some of the harshest conditions on Earth to explore this remote frozen continent. They faced blizzards, extreme cold, and isolation from the rest of the world, but they persevered, driven by a passion for discovery and a thirst for knowledge. Byrd's flights over Antarctica were nothing short of amazing. He covered a distance of over 18,000 miles during this expedition and made several record-breaking flights over the continent. He even flew over the South Pole a second time in 1934 and made several more discoveries of previously unknown mountains, valleys, and glaciers. But did you know Byrd also tried his luck in the North Pole as well? You really want to hear the story? Byrd's Arctic Expeditions Byrd's Arctic expeditions were just as exciting and ambitious as his Antarctic expeditions, and they were also full of groundbreaking discoveries and adventures. During his first Arctic expedition in 1926, Byrd and his team made several flights over the Arctic Ocean, which was a relatively unexplored region at the time. They collected data on weather patterns and ice conditions, and Byrd conducted several experiments on the effects of extreme cold on aircraft engines and other machinery. It was a thrilling and dangerous mission, as they were often flying over ice flows and treacherous terrain, but it was Byrd's second Arctic expedition in 1927 that really made headlines. He attempted to reach the North Pole by air, flying over 1,500 miles of uncharted Arctic territory in a single-engine Fokker airplane. The expedition was widely publicized and received a lot of attention, but unfortunately, Byrd was forced to turn back due to mechanical problems with his aircraft. It was a crushing blow for Byrd and his team, and they faced harsh criticism and allegations of mismanagement and incompetence. North Pole Controversy Byrd's failure to reach the North Pole on his 1927 expedition led to controversy and speculation about the veracity of his claims. Some critics accused Byrd of falsifying his navigation records and fabricating his flight over the pole. The controversy continued for decades, with some historians and researchers challenging Byrd's claims 
and alleging that he had deliberately misled the public about his achievements. However, subsequent investigations have largely vindicated Byrd's claims and shed new light on the challenges and limitations of polar exploration in the early 20th century. One of the main arguments against Byrd's claims was that his aircraft, the Floyd Bennett, did not have the range to fly to the North Pole and return to its base in Spitsbergen, Norway. However, subsequent analysis of the aircraft's performance and fuel consumption suggested it was capable of making the flight, albeit with little margin for error. Another argument against Byrd's claims was that his navigation records were incomplete or inaccurate. However, later investigations by the United States Navy and other organizations have largely confirmed the accuracy of Byrd's navigation and flight logs. Despite the controversy, Byrd's legacy as an explorer and scientist remains intact and that's why he was called back to duty for further exploration of this icy land. Operation High Jump In 1946, the world was abuzz with excitement as Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal appointed none other than Admiral Richard E. Byrd as officer in charge of the Antarctic Developments Project. What followed was nothing short of awe-inspiring. The largest Antarctic expedition to date, codenamed Operation High Jump, was launched with the aim of exploring and uncovering the secrets of this mysterious icy land with a massive naval force designated as Task Force 68, led by Rear Admiral Richard E. Cruzen, 13 U.S. Navy support ships, six helicopters, six flying boats, two seaplane tenders, and 15 other aircraft, the Armada arrived in the Ross Sea on December 31, 1946. Can you imagine the excitement and anticipation that must have filled the air as they set out to explore an area half the size of the United States, recording 10 new mountain ranges and covering the eastern coastline of Antarctica from 150 degrees east to the Greenwich Meridian? The expedition was a resounding success, and Admiral Byrd himself was interviewed by Lee Van Atta of International News Service about the expedition's command ship USS Mount Olympus. His words still ring in our ears to this day. The most important result of my observations and discoveries is the potential effect that they have in relation to the security of the United States. The fantastic speed with which the world is shrinking, recalled the Admiral, is one of the most important lessons learned during his recent Antarctic exploration. I have to warn my compatriots that the time has ended when we were able to take refuge in our isolation and rely on the certainty that the distances, the oceans, and the poles were a guarantee of safety. Operation High Jump was so awe-inspiring that it even won the Academy Award for Best Documentary in 1948, with the U.S. Navy producing a film named The Secret Land. And who could forget Admiral Byrd's appearance on the television show Longin's Chronoscope on December 8, 1954. His words were nothing short of prophetic as he declared that Antarctica would become the most important place in the world for science in the future. Mission Deep Freeze 1. Again, after some time passed, the U.S. called on Byrd for another service. Back in 1955-56, as part of the International Geophysical Year, the legendary explorer Admiral Richard Byrd was tasked with leading the U.S. Navy operation Deep Freeze 1, a mission that would establish permanent bases in the icy wonderland of McMurdo Sound, the Bay of Wales, and even the South Pole itself. This expedition marked a turning point in history, as it paved the way for a permanent U.S. military presence on this frozen continent. Can you believe it? Byrd spent just one week in the Antarctic, and yet his legacy lives on to this day. The legendary explorer passed away in his sleep at the age of 68 on March 11, 1957, at his home in the beautiful Beacon Hill neighborhood in Boston. He left behind a legacy that will be remembered for generations to come. With 22 citations and special commendations under his belt, including nine for bravery and two for extraordinary heroism and saving the lives of others, Admiral Byrd was a true hero. He received numerous prestigious awards throughout his illustrious career, including the Medal of Honor, the Silver Lifesaving Medal, the Navy Distinguished Service Medal, the Distinguished Flying Cross, and the Navy Cross. And let's not forget about the countless public awards he received for his remarkable contributions to society. Admiral Byrd was a trailblazer and an inspiration to all who knew him. His courage, determination, an unwavering spirit will continue to inspire future generations of explorers and adventurers for years to come. Let's take a moment to honor his memory and celebrate his incredible life. Did the story of this brave hero inspire you? What part did you like the most? Let us know in the comments section below and see you guys in the next one.